Before actually jumping out of the plane by myself, I had a long way to go. Everything started in the wind tunnel, where I learned the basics of body position, how I deploy my canopy and doing basic turns as well as adjusting my fall rate. So after spending some time in the wind tunnel and learning the basics of body position and all that stuff I finally registered myself for the accelerated freefall in California. Before actually jumping out of the plane, I had to learn a lot. So it was more theory stuff. What is your gear? How is your gear working? And how is your canopy deploying? What landing pattern do you need to fly? All that stuff to prepare yourself for your first skydive. I'm the cutaway trainer. And let's say our canopy is not in a good shape and we need, we need to cut, a, cut it away or we have a malfunction and we need to free the malfunction and go to our reserve. This is how it works. We grab our cutaway handle, locate the reserve handle, grab it, punch it and arch reserve. This is how it works. So actually this jump was my very first skydive in my life. So I didn't even do a tandem before. That was my bloody first skydive. So um, yeah, that was kind of crazy. And then the door opened, the cold wind rushed into the plane. It was my turn to go into the door frame. And then it was my turn, checking in, checking out and jumping. And I didn't felt any sensation of falling. So that was the first impression I had. Almost the same sensation like being in the wind tunnel, like being suspended in like a cushion of air. The first jump was kind of easy, like just staying stable, watching the signs the instructors are giving, which was 6,000 feet, waving off, deploy your canopy. First time on the canopy, absolutely stunning. I thought like, oh, you just did that. But the instructors were gone. <laughs> and then, like, okay, now I have to do that by myself, finding the landing area or the holding area, getting my landing pattern together. So next skydive, I even didn't pull on time. You can see that here, where my instructor needs to help me pulling the parachute because I got nervous. And that's completely natural, but it made, made me doing some mistakes, unfortunately. Which isn't bad, but I will tell you later why. So next skydive, I just had to do turns while it's both instructors holding me. So I did like a right turn, like a gentle turn, not even a full turn. So on the next jump, that was such an amazing feeling because it was the first time both instructors are releasing. So I, I went into the door frame. I did a pretty good exit on that one. Before that jump, they briefed me to keep calm and I just kept calm and tried to keep my body position as relaxed as possible. Chin up, presenting the chest, hips forward, and they released me and I didn't even feel it. So my body position was kind of neutral and good in that very moment. And I was just suspended in the air, didn't turn left or right or anything. All in all, super nice jump. After finishing both categories with two instructors, the jump is continuing with one instructor. You have to exit the plane with one instructor holding your grip, which is not really different because you already learned about body position and everything. And you see, it looks super fun. I was even able to see the plane going off in the distance, as you can see here. And um, yeah, after that, also the instructor releases the grip, 
and just um, watches you whilst you're doing small left and right turns. And yeah, deployment on time and to the next category. And the next category is super interesting because that's the first jump you have to jump by yourself. So the instructor is jumping right after you and that was so amazing. So I just saw the plane going off in the distance. It was a weird feeling, I remember it. So that was the first time I got the sensation of falling because I had a, I had something like, like in relation to, to me um, falling down to earth. So next guy, uh, the instructor was just coming right after me and we met again like face to face and then I had to do barrel rolls like rolling myself on the wind and I was so scared doing that before because I was scared about landing on my back and don't, not being able to recover this position so yeah, then it was the graduation jump where I had to do front flips, back flips, but it's super easy I already knew I can't stop right here. Like I need to continue this journey until I have this license. So I signed up for the L license course. My bank account was crying. A total of 25 jumps. So the jumps I did during my AFF, which are seven, eight, nine, two, two, the extra jumps I needed to do because I fucked up two categories and um, continued with the A license, so I worked towards these 25 jumps. The A license jumps are mainly solo jumps and then some coach jumps as you can see here. Then doing the first talk with a coach, like that was the first time like talking with another person in free fall and that was such an amazing moment. And then um, doing some swoops here, like diving down. It's the, um, yeah, well-known second of head down flying. Every student is so proud of it. <laughs> and But in a community that like that, it's not a real head down. But for me, that was a real head down. It felt so amazing. Super proud of that, and yeah, it really gave me this sensation of what can happen next, what I can achieve in this sport, and yeah, all in all, an amazing experience and time. So it's exam time. I now have to answer the A license exam, and um, hopefully, I will pass it. We will see. And after all of that training, I finally did one of my first jumps as an A-licensed skydiver together with a wingsuit pilot and that was so amazing. He kind of like carved around me head down in a wingsuit, it's hard to explain that but I just kept, I just kept my rotational speed with his rotation so we were like orbiting each other. It was so amazing. I did the skydiving course in a very fast paced way. So what I did is doing the A license, like AFF and A license in one month. Because this drop zone was open five days a week, I was able to show up there a bunch of times. 
And what happened was my subconscious mind got trained. So your subconscious mind might not be a friend with, with this sport because it is kind of like warning you. Your subconscious mind is like, hey, what is this guy doing? Or it's telling you, what are you doing? You're jumping out of an airplane, of a perfectly functioning airplane. Why are you doing that? They want to protect you in this situation because falling down to earth with 200 kilometers per hour is traumatizing or might be traumatizing. So this conflict which happened between my subconscious mind and my conscious mind turned out to be positive because my conscious mind was winning over my subconscious mind because I told myself this sport is safe I have read the safety records. I know what to do to keep myself safe in this sport and that I am responsible for my own safety. I was focusing on what I really wanted and I love flying and aviation. So this was always a huge part of me. And so I told myself, okay, um, I want to continue that journey happening at some point. It's like a dip. And you feel like, okay, is that really for me? Don't be afraid of that. Really figure, it, figure out if it is for you. Don't like do that to, pre to pretend or to show off. But if you want to continue this sport or journey to be happy and feed your soul, it's totally for you. Go for it and have fun, stay safe. And let me know if you want to start skydiving or if you want to become a skydiver. I want to answer your question, so just ask them down below. See you in the next one.